Rare Earths, Australia. We're at PDAC 2024 with arguably one of the rising stars in the entire rare earth market, Rowena Smith from Australian Strategic Materials. How are you today? I'm very well, Tracy, and, and delighted to be here with you. Can I ask you, you're, you've come over here for PDAC. What is your objective? I mean, there's world leaders here, you're here. What are you trying to do at this particular event? What's your top objective? Well, um, really, this is part of a three-week campaign that I've had here in North America. So I started in Miami, but then spent a lot of time last week in D.C., and then in New York, and then here. And so the objective for the whole of that trip is really strong engagement with government, both the ECAs as well as the government departments, looking for funding support for our project in New South Wales in Australia, uh, which we are wanting to get into production, and then also talking to investors uh, and offtake parties. Uh, and that's both for our Dubbo project, but also for our metals plant in Korea. So all of those conversations are underway at the moment. Well, your latest update was fabulous. I mean, it was a beautiful, it was a book. <laughs> well written uh, and a lot of news in there. Where would you like to start? Would you like to start with the target offtake partners and what's going on with that? Or where would you like to where would you like to begin? I think actually probably best to start with actually the funding support we're seeing from government because that's been a really strong theme for us over the last um, six months. I had the opportunity to come to the States in October of last year traveling with the Critical Minerals Trade Delegation that coincided with the state visit from the Australian Prime Minister. And during that visit, it allowed us to really start engaging at very senior levels with the government departments in the US to get a better understanding of how the developing US policy would actually apply to a rare earth mine in Australia. And then since then, over Christmas, uh, the Department of Defence has extended their Title III legislation to include Australia as a domestic source. So that for us is very important, talking with the um, ECAs, the, the credit agencies, as well as the government departments, and progressing our submissions uh, to access some of that funding support. Um, so that's a lot of what I've been doing in the last week. Uh, and that for us is exciting um, because what we know is going to be important in the offtake discussions is for the offtakers to have confidence that we've actually got funding support. Um, so then when I talk about the offtakers, we've been talking to offtakers in Europe, in Korea uh, and here in the States and talking about it across the portfolio. We've got rare earths uh, that are in conversation, but also zirconia, hafnia and ferroniobium. And those conversations are very advanced. Um, but you can feel that there is a desire for the off-takers to be able to see funding support for the project before they actually finalise those discussions. So those two pathways are converging uh, this year, which is going to be exciting for us. And of course, there's a world hunt for critical minerals worldwide right now from all kinds of companies <laughs> and countries alike. So, you know, there is, you're seeing a lot of government business to business. I was going to talk to you though about your technology how is your technology advancements going in korea because you guys were right at the top of the food chain if i recall so one of the things that's exciting is as you say that we're already in production in korea with the metals plant and we're doing their pure metals and we've already established our production lines for the light rare earths, the neodymium and praseodymium. But this year's focus is on developing the technology that we have so that it will apply for the heavy rare earths. So we're doing the final trial work on the dysprosium and the terbium metallization as we speak. Um, and then in parallel with that, we're doing the development around the strip alloy so that NDFEB or the, the, the specialist alloy that is the precursor for the magnet production for those high performance magnets that are needed for the wind turbines and the electric vehicles. And each magnet producer has got its own boutique recipe and there's quite 
you know, the process to go through the product qualification. So we've been working on that now for over 12 months. We're getting to the final stages of that. Um, and that's with about half a dozen different magnet producers globally. So that's also exciting for us as we start to see those processes reach conclusion and then we'll be able to uh, start ramping up that facility. Yeah, well, and of course, you're going to be one of the largest producers in the world. Is that not true when you get Dubbo into production? Well, we will be one of the only producers that actually goes all the way from mine to metal um, outside of the established supply chain in China um, once we're going. And in addition to the Dubbo material, one of the, um, I think, advantages for ASM is that we're very happy and in fact planning to supplement the Dubbo feed with other third-party oxides. So the metals plant will be able to grow well beyond what the actual Dubbo feed capacity is and support other projects uh, getting to market, not just our own. And of course, for those of you out there going, ASM, Australian Strategic Materials, we don't know this company. In addition, to why you should know it. Can you give us some of the competitive elements why people should be watching your stock? Oh, well, first of all, we're already in production delivering um, the light rare earth metals and alloys into the supply chain. So we're right at the forefront of that emerging alternative supply chain. And we're working across more than one jurisdiction. So our customers are in Korea, they're in Europe, and they're in the States. Um, so that's the first. Um, but then secondly, you know, we have got one of the few rare earth projects that is genuinely construction ready. And as soon as we have got funding, we will be directly into construction. And again, one of the few projects that is actually able to get oxide to market before 2030. You know, we would be targeting 2027, 20, 28. Um, so, you know, we're fully permitted, we've done all of the exploration work, we've got a 70-year resource there with a 20-year reserve, we've got, um, you know, all of the IP developed in-house with the support from uh, ANSTO, which is a very highly regarded research facility in Australia, where we've been doing work there for over 15 years, developing our separation and, and refining um, technologies. So we're good to go. And um, when we get going, we won't just have a, a, a concentrate. We won't even just have an oxide. We'll be able to, once we get going, take that product all the way through to the metal alloy directly into the magnet producers to supply that, that downstream uh, market. So what should shareholders be looking forward to in 2024? What we're going to see is some strong signals around government funding. So we'll see um, those government support monies, both for the engineering work, but also for the project itself. Uh, so that's what we're working toward delivering this year. You'll see offtakes being secured both for the Dubbo project itself, but also we will see these product validation processes complete and announced to market for the alloys going into the magnet producers. And we'll start to see those sales coming through this year as well. What a terrific uh, update. Rowena, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks very much, Tracy.